Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, it would certainly mean a lot. Over the decades, there have been many studies internally at aircraft manufacturers that have never seen the light of day. Some look to answer pressing airline requests, and some are more outlandish and highlight manufacturers' innovative nature. Some will also go further than just the drawing board, but most of them won't always emerge as an actual plane that is flying with passengers. The Airbus A380 Plus is one of the more recent proposals to take our industry by storm. Well, not really, but you know what I mean. But its entry into the scene, many would argue, was just as bemusing as the way it quietly departed without a trace. Surprisingly, the A380 Plus arrived in 2017, a development study for an enhanced A380-800, which was described to make operations with the aircraft far more efficient. Airbus proposed a redesigned cabin layout that could accommodate up to 80 additional passengers, bringing the total capacity to around 575 in a typical three-class configuration. The term typical is always, in my opinion, worth highlighting, considering the capacity of any aircraft will always depend on how a customer chooses to configure the plane. Think of the capacity as put forward by Airbus as a bit of a rough outline, but this could change depending on what the customer wants. Ultimately, though, this increase in seating capacity aimed to enhance many factors, including revenue potential per flight and overall cost effectiveness for airlines. In addition to the cabin modifications, the A380 Plus included aerodynamic improvements with a view of improving fuel efficiency and thus reducing operating costs. These enhancements saw the addition of large winglets at the end of the wings, which you'd probably say were the most notable feature about this A380 Plus. The hope was to also reduce drag while improving aerodynamic performance. Overall, the A380 Plus was expected to lead to fuel savings of around 4% per trip. Generally speaking, though, the European plane maker viewed the A380 Plus as a means to address some of the initial concerns from customers over the A380-800 and obviously provide their own solutions to these concerns. The chief operating officer at the time said the A380 Plus was an efficient way to offer even better economics and improved operational performance performance simultaneously. It is a new step for our iconic aircraft to serve worldwide's fastest growing traffic and the evolving needs of the A380 customers. The A380 is well proven as a solution to decreasing congestion at large airports and offers a unique passenger preferred experience. Now, he wasn't inherently wrong with this in the slightest to a certain degree. The A380 is still to this day, many would argue, a plane that customers love flying on. The flexibility in terms of the cabin and much more do mean it can be a fantastic solution also for airlines flying into slot restricted airports with high demand. But filling the A380 and making it work for most companies is certainly not all that possible. Additionally, you have so many other challenges such as the price point, airports ability to actually hold the aircraft and more, and that can be all factored into why we didn't see 1,000 units built of this aircraft. And for the A380 Plus, despite the visible improvements Airbus proposed, it needed to generate more demand. It didn't attract really any, and when your largest customer of the A380-800, being the Dubai-based Emirates, is essentially opposed to such an A380 Plus and believed that an A380neo, that being a new engine option for anyone that may be new to the industry would harbour better efficiency. So your development study is already going to struggle if your largest customer essentially believes that while the Plus does come with upgrades, it's not what they're after and would by no stretch of the imagination push them into ordering it and moving forward with that development study. And obviously, from a point of view of Airbus, they didn't just want this A380 Plus to have one customer. One of the biggest talking points has always been for the A380-800, what would have happened if Emirates have never committed to it in such sheer numbers? I think you could say they were hoping with the plus that they wouldn't have something like this happen once more. Additionally, there was probably a view that the A380 plus was a last-ditch attempt by Airbus 
to sell the program. Remember, at this point, it was already struggling to attract new customers. And while, yes, production continued, Emirates were largely the only ones spurring that on. And eventually, we would see that landmark moment arrive, which would result in Airbus realizing that there was no need to continue producing the A380. So how do they combat that? Look to introduce A plus and continue that life as long as they can. What happened to this development study? Well, following the official reveal, which came in June 2017, there actually wasn't ever much talk of the aircraft again, or should I say study. The way it entered the market, it also seemingly exited too. Very quiet and with much unknown. Don't get me wrong though, there's been many development studies throughout the decades that have been revealed and have simply vanished. But if we're taking a look at, say, the last decade, this is the one that stands out. And it really just left the industry without a trace. In fact, if you do a quick Google search of A380+, Plus, you will see the articles that are announcing the development study. You will see mine and others' analysis on the aircraft. But you won't see executives, say, speaking on the study. Some analysts would argue that by the time the A380 was released itself, let alone the Plus as a development study, interest in quad-engine widebodies with a double deck wasn't there anymore, and airlines were indeed transitioning towards more efficient twin-engine planes. So to assume the A380 Plus would succeed would simply be ludicrous. While Airbus did offer improvements with the Plus, the desire just wasn't there. Even with the improvements, Airbus really couldn't overcome the existing challenges present with the Dash 800. The A380 program would eventually see its end in 2019 after the plane maker announced such. In 2021, they would go on to stop producing the plane, with the final delivery occurring at the end of that year to the largest customer, fittingly, Emirates. The A380 Plus, like I mentioned, was not mentioned ever again, and the announcement of production coming to a close for their main aircraft from that family family, only 18 months after the Plus was revealed, certainly sealed the fate of this type. It didn't work. Maybe it wasn't the right time. Maybe customers had moved on, but arguably when your biggest customer for the existing plane says they want something different, well, you're going to struggle to get more customers to follow suit. You can let me know your thoughts down below on the A380+. Plus. Do you believe this development study was worth their time, or could you see it potentially being useful in the future? Or do you think that the A380's comeback, how I've discussed here on the channel, is short-lived and airlines, once the 777X becomes available, will just start moving towards that and the A350-1000? You can let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Like I always say, if you are new to the channel, please do subscribe if you haven't already. Be sure to like the video if you enjoyed and do take care. Do also be safe. I'll see you in the next couple of days for more aviation analysis. And we'll fly